All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the VDEV rig that was created for various Viz classes, including the rendering and shading course and Vertical Studio. The purpose of this file and most look development or VDEV rigs is meant to show off your texturing and surfacing work on an asset you've created. Um, it's in a diagnostic environment, so the reviewer, the person looking at your work, can understand your lighting and understand the render settings that you have set up and if your colors, your color space is hooked up correctly. This file that I'm showing is one that was created in 2023 and it is using Maya 2022 and RenderMan 24. First, you want to go ahead and locate your VDEV rig. So in this case, this one has been provided for the rendering and shading course for spring 2023. Um, in order to access it, um, you want to grab the entire folder that it comes with. So in this case, ours is located in assignments, assignment files, and VDEV rig right here. And you want to go ahead and download this entire thing. It's going to come in as a zip file, and so we're just going to go ahead and download it and unzip it. Here I've gone ahead and uh, unzipped it. So I got this folder here. Inside this folder we have everything that we need for our, um, everything we need for our project. So to make the VDEV rig work correctly, um, we have our mail file that sets our workspace for the project. Um, inside here we have our scene, which is where our actual Maya file is. Um, down here under source images, we have um, some texture files that are being referenced by the VDEV rig. And then in images, um, this is where our renders will default to dump in. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my file. So go open scene, I'm gonna go to downloads, VDEV rig, scenes, VDEV rig. Don't save. All right, so if your image loads in like this and you're looking through the perspective camera, go ahead and make sure that you go to panels, perspective, and set it to the render camera. This is the one that we wanna actually render from. And I'm going to go ahead and do a test render just to look at it. And you'll notice it doesn't look correct. It looks nothing like what I had shown before. And that's because our environment light is failing to find our environment light image, our high dynamic range image that is being loaded in and is our light source. Um, so in order to do that, we need to fix that. We need to go ahead and set our project so that our Maya file knows where to find that image that we had downloaded. Because by default, Maya doesn't know where that image should lo be located on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. We're going to go ahead and come up here to File, Set Project. I'm going to go ahead and find that folder. And I want to select the folder that has this workspace.mail file. So I'm going to go ahead and select that VDEV rig file or folder, the one that contains that workspace.mail, and click Set. And now when I render, you'll notice that it renders correctly. Okay. The reason why that is, is if I come into rendering group and go to this environment lights right here, we have this, um, I guess you would call it variable or keyword right here. That's WS in brackets and it stands for workspace. And so this is just a placeholder key text that um, whatever we set our project to, it's going to auto complete and fill in right here. So it's going to find that folder, right? So it's set project, which is uh, C users Caleb downloads VDEV rig, right? And then and from there, you'll see it's going to the source images and panorama.hdr. So it knows, since I set this project, to look here first and then go to source images and then grab that panorama.hdr. Okay, and so all of our texture related stuff, which is essentially the environment light and these two color checker cards, are referencing that folder, that source images folder. And when we set our project, it successfully brings us there. Okay, now we've got it pretty much all set up and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk through a couple things to keep in mind. First, I'll go ahead and describe a little bit more about this file here. So first, you can see this looks a little complicated, but it's pretty easy once you get used to it. Um, we have a couple model options here for swapping out our diagnostic object down here. And then we have a couple environment options down here. So by default, I'm working with this flat background, right? Um, but then I also have a curved backdrop, and if I want to do that, I just turn off the visibility of the flat backdrop and turn on the curved backdrop. And then I also have this clean, clean HDRI if I want to see the HDRI. Okay, and they look like this. So here's the flat backdrop, here's the curved HDR or curved backdrop, and then here's the flat HDRI, which is just going to show the image. Okay, you'll also notice that our HDRI is desaturated. So if we come over here, this is just what we're using by default. If you wanted map saturation, just set this to one. Also, if you wanted a different environment light, so let's say I wanted the, the Tomoko, which I also have in here, click on open. 
and I go ahead and click on render. You'll see, I don't know why it's not updating right there. It should have, you can see it's clearly updating, but you can see now I'm loading in a different environment. Um, and if I go ahead and set that map saturation to one, you'll see, I mean, this isn't a very saturated map, but you can see there's a little bit of color in it. Let's go ahead and set it back to that panorama.hdr. Um, let's go back to source images, panorama.hdr. And here we go. And you can see there's a lot of color in there. If you do decide to use that clean backdrop, you'll see that's desaturated. So you just want to make sure that when you grab that asset in the background, you can select those objects right here, this one right here, that I want to go ahead and come over to this texture map that it's attached to it. And I'm just going to go ahead and set the saturation for that to one so that it matches the environment light. So if you want to work with the saturated map, just make sure you do that. However, if you are watching this video for the rendering and shading class, this is our preferred presentation for the assignments, the flat, black, uh, flat backdrop and a desaturated environment light. So environment light with no saturation to it. So let's take a look at some of these models. So by default, we have the teapot with no legs. We also have a teapot with legs. So this is just it in a different pose. We just have to turn on the legs. So now we have the legs on there. If we want to get rid of the lid on either of the teapot with no legs or with legs, just click on that lid button. There's also a base, which doesn't really work with the teapot with no legs. It works better if we have this one. So if we can turn on the teapot with legs, right? And we also have the base that came with the, the RenderMan diagnostic environment. We can do that. There's also a liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide the teapot for now. If you turn on this liquid, ooh, I might have to, I probably have to turn on something. Here we go. So you can see there's a liquid asset. So this won't really show up unless you make your asset um, transparent. So if you want, uh, or translucent. So if you want the uh, teapot to be like a glass shader or something like that, you'll be able to see through it to this liquid piece right here. Um, I also have a solid, um, let's go ahead and turn on no legs, let's turn on the lid. So we have the solid teapot and we also have a hollow teapot. And again, if we go ahead and render this with glass, um, the hollow teapot is going to have an interior into it. So like a volume. And then the solid teapot is essentially like a solid piece. To illustrate that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys by assigning a glass material to this. And I'm also doing this in real time because I also wanna show you how to assign materials or just a reminder that down here in this channel box, each of these layers, which is how we've been controlling and turning on and off these various um, pieces or these objects, um, they're all in a reference mode. And that's meant so that, you know, we can't accidentally move and uh, mess up anything in our scene. Um, but if I do wanna select them, like. If I want to assign a material, I just want to go ahead and turn off the reference mode. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the reference mode on these assets here. And so you can see now I can select all these assets here. I'm going to go ahead and assign a, a glass material that I'd made. And I'm going to come over here. And so we can see, let's go ahead and turn off the lid. This is the solid teapot. And I'm going to go ahead and stop that render. And we're going to see what this looks like with the hollow teapot. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I sign that glass material. Oh, I got to render that one. And you can tell the difference, hopefully, between these is one feels much more dense and solid, like it has mass all the way through from one side of the teapot to the other. And the other one feels like it has an interior, like a volume or a hollow in the middle of it. Um, and so this one has thin walls, so it has a front and back. And this other one right here is one big solid piece, which is going to affect any rendering using, uh, or any material rendering that's going to be using a material that has light going through the object or into the object. If you're doing something like a metal or a plastic, you probably doesn't really matter which model you're working with, but if you're doing anything like subsurface or you're doing anything like glass uh, or a liquid, then it's gonna be very noticeable which model you choose. And just to show you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that render. We're gonna come over here and I'm just gonna show you guys what that looks like. So here's our hollow teapot and here's our solid teapot. Cool, so that's just what those settings there are for. Some other features of this VDEV rig is that we have an object turntable. So the first 120 frames is the object spinning. And then the next 120 frames is the environment light spinning. And if you want to have this object spin, I mean, you don't have to use these teapots. Um, you can go ahead and just 
import your own model and just put them underneath this animation group. So this animation group is the part that's rotating. So, you know, if you want to bring in your own asset, just go ahead and hide the teapots and just put this underneath the animation group. Oh, I forgot to also mention that there is also a meat mat here. So it has the default meat mat that um, Substance Painter comes with. Uh, if you like to dev on a different type of object. But again, if you're doing this for a particular class, please follow those specifications um, that we require. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to this one here. You'll also notice that when the environment light changes, that down here we have these um, color checker charts and one of them changes and then the other one uh, does not. So the bottom one is affected by light, essentially has a normal shader. So depending on the angle the light's at, it's going to be um, changing its values, right? Like a normal thing that's being surfaced. And the top one is emitting a constant color. So it's not affected by lighting. So it's always gonna show the same exact texture map in its pure form. So that texture map there um, is uh, this color checker chart. And so this color checker chart is meant to give the reviewer an idea of if your color space settings are correct. A color checker chart is also used for um, essentially calibrating device display devices so that the colors look correctly. But in our case, we're just using it for the reviewer's sake to understand if your colors look right so they can know what they're critiquing, right? If your colors are looking really funky, they know if it's your texture maps or if you have a bad setting on your um, render file. So um, this top one is always going to be constant. And then the bottom one is really more for exposure check, right? If your color checker chart is exploding, right? And it's like way too bright or it's like way too, it's like saturated and tinted away from this one, then that just tells the viewer something about your lighting setup. So that's why we have those two files there. And more RenderMan specific and image tool, I'm making, I'm ex going to export these images and view them in image tool, RenderMan's default um, render viewer. Um, I want to go ahead and make sure my color space stuff is correct. In this case, my file, the file by default is not set up to use ASUS. It's just using regular linear sRGB. If you come over here, uh, actually, let's come up to here to view. If I go to uh, image color space, should be set to automatic and that automatic should by default set to linear. And then when I come to the display view, it should set it to sRGB. You'll see this is a little bit of a bug, but sometimes it'll say Rec 709 and when you click on sRGB, nothing changes. By default, it's actually on sRGB, but it check marks uh, Rec 709. So you can see Rec 709 looks a little bit different. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind um, on this version of RenderMan that I'm on. Um, but by default, linear sRGB is totally cool. Um, this is what it, again, depending on what you're aiming for, if you're doing this for a class, follow those specifications. If you want to use ASUS for like your portfolio, of course, um, set up your project like that. Just pro tip, if you're going to do ASUS, make sure that you stop your render, close image tool, set, change those settings to ASUS, and then restart it. Because by default, image tool won't convert them for you until you close it. And then when I'm done, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do file, export file. And we're going to go ahead and export it and we'll export the downloads and I'll save it as a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, with a JPEG, um, it's going to bake in the background pixels, right? So it's going to have a full alpha because the JPEG has no alpha information. It's just going to be if it's black, if, it, if there's like nothing there and it just shows up black in the render, that black is going to show up in JPEG. But if I did PNG, let's go ahead and just set this up. So if I come over here, we're going to do this with um, let's just turn off all of all these previews in the background. I'm going to select this environment and let's go to attribute editor. Um, if I go ahead and turn on enable primary visibility, let's go ahead and re-render. You see the environment's visible. You can see how that gross pixelated background. Let's go ahead and file export file to as a J or PNG. Sorry. We'll save it downloads and we'll just say, um, background. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it. So if we come over here to downloads, you'll see that this image has no background, right? Um, that's because um, by default, RenderMan is rendering out those pixels that have that environment image on it as having an alpha of zero. And you can see down here, I have this pixel readout, um, the R, G, and B, and then this fourth value is um, the alpha value or the transparency of the pixel. You can see when I hover over the background, it's zero, so it's transparent. But then when I hover over any of my assets, they're one, which means they're visible. If I save this out as a JPEG, so we'll go ahead and export file as a JPEG. So we'll come here, downloads. I'm um, sure we'll, we don't even need to bother naming it. All right, 
So if I come over here and I open up that JPEG, you'll see that JPEG saves in that background. So just keep that in mind if you're going to have, uh, when you export this, that, that if you're saving as a PNG, that that's going to do that to the background. You might want that. So for instance, if you're doing this for a uh, turntable or you want to go ahead and composite this over something you might you might want to remove that background so you can do like a gradient or some kind of other setup in another file um, but keep in mind though that if you use any of these backgrounds here so the flat backdrop or the curved backdrop let's go ahead and um, get that going or the curved backdrop or even the clean preview that those are going to bake in you can see when I hover it those are alpha one so if you wanted to go ahead and comp this you would have to export something to mask out that background if you're going to use any of these backdrops so just keep that in mind okay let's go ahead and talk a little bit about image tools that's the render viewer that RenderMan chooses to use by default so all of our images have been showing up here I have my setup looking like this right by default yours might look something like this so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close the inspector. We can turn that off inside of window. So we go inspector and then I turn on catalog so I can see all my different renders at different times. I like to have that there. I also like to have the pixel readout at the bottom. That's this thing right here. That's going to tell me the red, green, blue, and alpha value of my pixels when I hover over them. I'm also working in default linear sRGB. So if you, by default, this file is set up to render using linear sRGB as the color space. Um, if you want to use um, ASUS 1.2, I'm not going to go over how to set up ASUS, but if you set it up on your computer, you would just come over to the render settings, render man, features, and change your configuration to ASUS 1.2. But we're not doing that. If you do switch it, though, uh, make sure you close image tool after you make the switch, uh, because by default it won't switch until you close image tool for you. Um, and so in order to make sure I'm using linear SRG, I'm going to come up to the view and we're going to make sure our image color space is set to linear. If you have automatic, it defaults to linear. And then our display view is set to sRGB. You can see it's highlighted and it says it's Rec 709. It's actually sRGB. It's just like a weird glitch that image tool has in this current version of RenderMan. You'll see when I click on sRGB, nothing changes. But then when I come back over here to um, display view and do Rec 79, you can see it gets a little bit darker. Um, so by default, it should be sRGB. Um, so that should be how we're viewing our image here. Next, let's go ahead and talk about how to export our image out of image tool. So you don't want to do any screenshotting, right? Don't screenshot your image tool or your viewport if you're doing the um, rendering inside the frame or inside the viewport, uh, because if you do that, you're going to end up with any uh, color adjustment stuff that your operating system is applying to your screen to make it easier for you to like look at your screen first. So for instance, I use Flux. It's essentially a night light mode that makes it easier to look at my image for long periods of time on my computer. Uh, it tints the blues to have an orange color to them. But if you do that, uh, when I screenshot it, it's going to bake that into my image. So it's going to give it that orange tinting to it. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Export File. And so if you're going to be bringing this into, let's say, Nuke or another program where you want to have um, channel packing, so you're packing, uh, let's say, like um, different light groups or different um, AOVs for compositing, you'll want to use an OpenEXR file type. Um, and if you have AOVs, you'll want to use that with not the no AOVs version. Otherwise, you want to export it as a JPEG or PNG if you're just going to be sharing it with somebody, like you're submitting it for homework and you just, you're just not going to be editing it somewhere else, or you want to send it over Slack uh, or email to somebody, just save it as one of these lighter file types. So with a JPEG, it's not going to have any alpha transparency, right? The, every single pixel is going to have full alpha 1.0 transparency. I mean, it's not transparent, but it's alpha value is one. And then if you do a PNG, anything that is not a 3D object is going to be have an alpha value of zero, which means that if I open it up, it's going to be transparent. So to look at that, um, what I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and come over here to window, make sure our pixel readouts on. And if I hover, hover over my pixels, you'll see down here it's updating. First three values are my red, green, blue pixel values. The last value is my alpha channel. So you see, because I'm using this flat backdrop, it's using a 3D object. Every single pixel has an alpha value of one because there's a 3D object on every pixel of my render image, right? But if I go ahead and turn off the um, that backdrop, you'll see now that 
this backdrop hat or this back of the um, render has nothing in there. There's no 3D objects in there. So it has a um, uh, zero alpha value, right? And if I hover over any of these 3D objects, they show up. If I grab that environment light and I actually make it visible, so we'll come over here and do enable primary visibility. Oop, sorry, not that one, primary visibility. You can see that it, the render uh, image shows up, right? That environment light actually shows up in this render, but you can still see it has an alpha transparency of zero. Now, if I export this file out as a JPEG, and we're gonna go ahead and save this as A, right? And then I save this out as a PNG, and we're gonna go ahead and call this one B, save, okay. Um, if I come over here to A, you'll see that um, because it's a JPEG and JPEGs have no alpha pixel value, that um, that backdrop is coming in at full transparency. So all those, um, envir that environment light image is showing up. But if I come over here to my PNG, you'll see that that is transparent because um, by default, RenderMan sets those, that um, environment lights pixels to be um, zero transparency as if it's not an object sitting there. So that can be really useful if you wanna go ahead and comp this over something in the backdrop. But keep in mind though, that if you do wanna have that transparent background, then you wanna make sure that you don't have any of these um, uh, backdrop objects visible, right? So this one, this one, and the clean HRI preview. If I hover over those, you can see they all have a uh, alpha transparency of one because they are 3D objects in the scene. So just keep that in mind. And so that's basically it. We just wanna go ahead and export our file here as a JPEG or PNG in most cases. So that's the gist of the VDEV rig. Um, I hope it helps you guys present your work in the best possible light. And let us know if there's any suggestions or issues you guys might have with this file so we can make it even better.